the video with Kerry Carpenter one-legged drill. What is the purpose behind it and what should the feel be? Let me show it to you and I'll talk about it. There's two of them here. This is the one that's, that's awkward, okay? Watch the grown area of his rear leg. By the way, to the young lady that I said, start with your leg over, instead of coiling it up underneath you, instead of lifting the knee up underneath you, start with your leg over. Watch what Carrie does here. Start it over here. See that leg go back toward the, to the net behind him? He's getting a tremendous stretch in the growing area when he does that. Okay? And we want that. We're gonna feel stretch around our leg, we're gonna feel it in our back, we're gonna feel it in our butt. We also wanna feel the stretch in the growing area. Now here's the other drill where he now will let the foot come down when he swings, but he still has that stretch in the growing area. He doesn't have to move his leg over toward the net to do it. He's felt it from the first drill, and now he has the feeling right now, and as he goes forward, he still feels it, and he allows his foot to come down as he swings this time, okay? By the way, when you have a really good right-handed hitting third baseman, shortstop, second baseman, or a really good left-handed throwing first baseman, let me start over, right-handed hitter, right-handed thrower, or left-handed hitter, left-handed thrower for the first baseman, when they turn a double play on a ground ball, they get that same or very similar load in the growing area of their rear leg. And when I teach that one-legged drill, the one that you stay one-legged the whole time, when I have a shortstop uh, or a third baseman or a righty, righty, lefty, lefty, they pick it up really quick because they already feel I already do that when I turn a double play.